side sounded nicer. Yeah. Episode seven. Yeah. Welcome to episode seven. So funny. Uh, the Airstream. So the story about the the uh, insulation. So we've been working. couple giant sheets of metal that extend from the back bumper all the way to the front and it uh, you know basically covers everything on the bottom so water and stuff doesn't get up into your trailer and uh, a lot of rivets to get that off but then as you can see here there uh, we're missing these panels we pulled those off so there were panels that kind of went down and curved and then went underneath the body to the frame so we've been working on removing all of those from the entire trailer. There's probably probably about eight to ten, ten, I don't know, ten or so of those to make up the whole bottom corners. And then inside of that is more insulation. So there's insulation on the walls and then also in between the floor and the belly pan and all these outer pieces. So. Anyway, some of those first ones we pulled off, pulled out the insulation. Some of the insulation was really just broken down and there was hardly even any in there. But then uh, other ones that we pulled out around the sides, we you know pulled the sides off and then hadn't gotten to like cleaning all that stuff out yet uh, because you know dinner time, but dinner bells ring in, all those things moved on. Well, the next day uh, it was a lot of wind. Sometimes that happens in Colorado. And uh, we were chasing insulation all down the, the block. It's not a funny story, it's a terrible story because bad, I'm nasty. like, oh my gosh, we're littering the world. Like, that stuff is toxic. And now there's like pieces of it all in our grass that yeah. it's awful. It's so bad. But anyway, we'll update you too on what we've been doing. But I feel like it's only been two weeks since we've been on and it feels like so long. It feels like we've been through so much with our trailer and so many like talks and chats and feels and like all the things about it. You guys, I have a confession. I almost did a terrible thing. It was like this close to a terrible thing. So, um, like almost two weeks ago, this woman like randomly knocks on my door. I normally don't even answer the door when I don't know who these people are, but I thought she was like, I had a bunch of people coming to like drop off homeschool projects and I don't know, I, I don't know, I figured she was somebody. And she randomly knocks on the door and basically like a minute of small talk before I figured out like who are you and why are you even at my house? But she says that she like buys and collects Airstreams and wanted to buy our Airstream. And I was like, uh, no, like absolutely not. It, there's no way that our Airstream is for sale. Like our whole life at the moment is a life like plan for right now is centered around this Airstream. Like she has a name and a website and like, no, she's not for sale. And so this conversation led to like one thing or another. And she's like, well, I collect them and blah, 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 blah. And I made a comment that like spiral thoughts in my brain and I said the only possible way I would have any interest whatsoever of getting rid of this Airstream would be if I was like trading it to upgrade it for a bigger Airstream to have a little bit more space and as soon as like I hadn't really thought about that prior to this like we've been looking at all these like oh how do we want to design it and all these things and we look at like all these vlogs and Instagrams and stuff and we're like oh look how they did theirs and look how their beds are and the comment that often comes up Tom usually says yeah well there's bigger than ours is yeah well that looks like they have a little more space than we do and so anyway saying that to her like opened this box in my brain of like oh well maybe like I wonder if there are ones that are bigger if it's around the same price as the value of ours and what if we could like you guys, I almost sold Ramona. I like, and I thought, well, if we could sell it for around the same price as one that's in the same condition and around the same, you know, status of ours before we get too far into projects, then wouldn't it be nice to have more space? And what if, you know, if we're traveling for like extended length of time and all these things. So I ended up finding one locally in Colorado for around the same 
same value. That was a 31 foot, um, what are they called? Sovereign? I think so, yeah. Or well, so and the, the thing that boggled me though was like, I would like to have more space, you know, especially if we were planning any like extended trips and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, having more space would definitely be nice. So we're like, okay, well, I, I guess, like, if, 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 you know, if we're not coming out of pocket too much more, it's a similar kind of trade, then let's take a look, I guess. So we drove not too far, like an hour and a half or so, and we checked out one, and, um, wow, you know, six feet doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a huge amount as we're like, wow, it's so big. And the size sounded really dreamy, but we I did, did it, felt too big. it felt huge. It's definitely a little bit. So big. big. And then we pulled up home, and I was like, Definitely um, smaller when we got back home. And then it sure. didn't help that I posted <laughs> my thought process in like one of the airstream groups, <laughs> and like all the, I had like so many comments, like dozens of comments of basically people saying like, "You have a family of five, you're out of your mind." Like a twenty-four foot, no way. Like there will be carnage. <laughs> like, there's no way. I love my family, but. Money. 
like skill that we don't necessarily have, maybe have, but haven't had to ever exercise or use. Um, and there's challenges and there's like the physical challenges. It's like, I want to do this. I got to get a towel and I got to figure it out. But then like the mental part of that of like, can I, do I know how, am I good enough? Like, do we have like the skill and the know-how to do these things? And you got to like combat all these thoughts and feelings and figure it out and keep going and like, like it's it's a lot and so all that brought up a couple days of like can we do this and then cry and stuff and <laughs> our kids are like do you want to play ball we're like no we're talking and you know all these things and um so after all that though I feel like I feel like we came over some major like mental emotional like triumphs in these last couple weeks and got right back to working on things and it's felt so much better with renewed attitudes. What do you think? You want to talk about that? Talk about your um, mind and your feeling. Yeah, I would say she's probably more so describing me in that situation. super analytical. I don't want to move forward on something before I know it's the right way to go, uh, which is not always great. But uh, there's so many con conflicting articles. Like some people are like, yeah, use this drill bit, and I use this drill bit, and I use this one. Oh, you shouldn't use that one, because then you might drill a hole larger than you need to, and therefore it might leak, and like, oh my god, I've already drilled half my trailer out with that. <laughs> um, and I say, uh, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I think that brought up a lot of different things, but, and we got into doing the belly pan, and I mean, for the most part, this thing is just lots of rivets, so, you know, felt a lot better drilling out all the rivets, and starting to see the belly pan come apart, and, um, but yeah, now, I feel reading though after, article this morning, it's possible that we could have fine. drilled the holes out too big. But anyway, I do feel a lot better. Like I said, we had a couple of these days of, like, the thoughts and the feelings and the talks about it and that, yes, you can do it. And yes, we do have what it takes. And, yes, look at all the things. Like, I went through this, like, list of, like, look at all these projects we've done in our life that you didn't know how to do and look how awesome they are. And look at, remember this thing that came up yeah, that felt, like, defeating kind of and then you, like, figured it out and now it's so good. And, um, but after that, we've had, like, a handful of work days and I feel like we're starting to kind of, um, just kind of figure out our flow. Like, obviously, Tom has more skill than I do, but there's plenty of, like, small, busy work things that can be done, you know, that I do while he's doing bigger 
things that either way take time and need to need to happen. So um, let's show you what we've been working on. It doesn't like look super exciting. It's not like this great before and after, but um, it's what we've been doing. So we were talking about the belly pan. Let's see if I can get this thing lowered. Yeah. So the belly pan, like Tom said, is like metal sheets that are all under the trailer. So we've been working not in the trailer, but underneath the trailer, which is not necessarily Tom's favorite place. Oh my gosh, see how tight the space is? It's not necessarily Tom's favorite space to be working. Um, we've been doing lots of laying on the ground here in tiny little spots, trying to get to the frame, okay? So all under here, um, you can see here still has a piece on. So normally there's this like curved metal here and the trim. So something as simple as taking off the trim is like, you know, a decent amount of work, like not hard, but time consuming of drilling out like every single rivet just to be able to get to this piece that you need to drill out more rivets to be able to get that off, to be able to get to the next piece. So we've been going along getting this stuff off to work toward getting to the frame. So the frame is, I mean, essentially like the foundation of the trailer, right? Like super duper important, um, an important essential piece. And sometimes people think that they buy a trailer in good condition and you can't really see the frame and you can't access the frame by the time you get the floor out or the belly pan off and you get to the frame, you find that you've got a lot more issues than what you signed up for. Yeah. Um, like looking at our frame here, you can see some some rust, right? I mean, there's some up in there. Um, but for the most part, it's still used a lot of the original paint on there. It's in really good condition, uh, considering any person who's renovated these would would tell you that. the that 31 foot trailer though that we were looking at like holy cow you, there was no original paint that thing was just I mean this rust was so bad there was just chunks of rust flakes coming off of yeah. of the uh, of the frame I when I pulled the the belly pan like they had the whole belly pan get, get under there and see that so this is all belly pan and that extends you can see all the way up down through the airstream but anyway um theirs was lots of different pieces it had been pulled apart already before and kind of pieced back together and um as i was just pushing on it a little bit you could just see like just chunks of rust were coming out of that thing in my hands so i was like oh my gosh like this trailer like we would probably need to get an entire new frame yeah and that's not something <laughs> the you want to do the whole shell. Like, when you're looking at getting these trailers like you go into it with understanding that like you're replacing most of the things right like oh well we're gonna need new plumbing and we might need to fix the electric and we're gonna replace the lights and the walls and the cabinets and all these things but there's a few things that like you don't you don't want to have to replace the frame right it's like buying a house and saying hey, you know what? oh we can remodel the kitchen, but we're gonna need a new foundation. Like, no, you don't do that. The foundation's bad, you don't buy the house, you know? So like the frame is essential. Um, windows are a big expensive thing. The floor, if you don't have to, I mean, some people do have to replace the whole floor, but if you don't have to replace the whole floor, like that would be better. There's just like a few fundamental things that you want to be in good shape. So our frame, Sorry, need, it does need like work and treatment, and that's gonna be, that's kind of where we're at currently is so um, once we can access it, once we get all this belly pan work done, then we give some TLC to the frame. So you can like, we're still researching again, like how the best ways to do it. But basically you like clean up and grind off the rust and um, there's different products. We haven't picked one to use if anybody's watching this that is experienced. Love found, your suggestions. Yeah, I found a couple. You basically, once you grind, I've got like a, so I bought it at the store today. This morning I ran to the store to grab some things so we could work on more stuff. And there's a, for the grinder, it's like a paddle sander. 
type of deal. So you put that on and you just grind off like basically the major flakes, but it's actually better to not grind it totally smooth from what I'm reading to have some rust on there and some textures good because then this product that you end up putting on you just paint it on and then that's it and and it seals it it stops the rust growth nice. and uh, and it just completely restores all the metal so cool. it should be fairly simple I guess so currently we're finishing getting off the belly pan and then we're gonna do that we're gonna treat the frame and then as the belly pan is off, we need it off to access the subfloor. So the subfloor is kind of our next big project or part of kind of our foundational work here. Um, we're not redoing the whole floor. We've talked about that in other episodes, but we have sections that we need to fix and we need to be able, it's the floor is bolted to the frame. So really we need to be able to get to the frame. To right. do so floor off, fixing the frame, fixing the floor, or pan off to fix the frame, to fix the floor. Um, and then while it's off, we have tanks to work with underneath, our black and our gray tanks, which we've talked about before. Um, and then we'll start insulation because insulation, we originally thought that wasn't like an immediate next step because we weren't inside yet, but we were forgetting about underneath. So we'll have to get, figure out our insulation to get that underneath to put the belly pan back on. So anyway, most of our work lately is outside. Um, we're also going to work on dents pretty soon because the dents you need to fix before the leaks because, you know, if you imagine something is kind of dented, as you pull, pull it out, it's going to like change the shape. So I think recently we said that we were going to do leaks soon, like close thing to next. But if you do that before the dents, then you're kind of like, you know, if something's glued and then you pop it out, you're changing where it's, you know, I do this and my hands are doing crazy things. I hope you know what I'm talking about because I'm going like this. That makes it make more sense. <laughs> um, anyway, that's next. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, started cutting off. So the floor itself it. has, it's called a C channel. So here on the uh let's see we'll flip this over a little bit all right there we go so as you can see here my head is missing all right as you can see here we've got the shell and right here this red this is the sub floor um, that's the floor of the inside of the trailer so on the other side of this shell, down at the bottom, there's what we call C channel, and it basically, I mean, it just looks like a C, and so that is attached to the shell, and then the uh, the floor slides in, so that wood floor is slid into that C channel, and then there's bolts that go straight through, uh, and then connect into the frame and hold all that together, and so you have to, you know, those bolts when they put them in, once they're in and tightened, then they they hammer the uh, the bolt over so it's kinked, and that way, you know, through movement and everything, those nuts don't actually come loose and go off. Um, the purpose. That said, they're not straightforward to remove. You can't just unbend that and, and pull the nut off. It wouldn't work. So we got to use a grinder and chop off the bolts um, and the nut, and then you just kind of hammer the rest straight through out of there. So anyway, that was another thing that we were doing is those under here, chopping, chopping bolts. I had uh, two of my cutoff wheels blow into pieces already. So oh yeah, good. that was another fun thing. Yeah. So um, good thing I was wearing safety glasses. Yeah, I've been breaking the things. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Tom is much better at tools than I am, so I'm like, I really want to help. Like I started doing little things like. time and then I'm like I want to be useful right like I want to do the thing so I'm going to start drilling out the rivets because there's so many and that needs to be done so he sets me up with the proper drill bit and like I get under there and I'm feeling all like cool with my safety goggles and ready to get in there and like two seconds I'm like um I broke it <laughs> Rivet, it was. 
a lot of experience with them. I'm just gonna take the screw. I'm just gonna do it with a screwdriver, like just a regular screwdriver. Like how hard? Sure, it takes a little bit more time, but like how every anybody can use a screwdriver. Like come on. So I get the regular screwdriver, and I go <laughs> screw it, and I totally broke the screwdriver. Like a plain old. <laughs> I broke the bit on the screwdriver. Um, Primarily in the back area, uh, because probably you know replacing a tank or something. But um, anyway, there was a few more scattered throughout, and they were very rusted. And I don't blame her uh, too much. First I did, but then <laughs> then I went to go do one myself, and I also broke a bit. So yeah, you broke a bit too. Anyway, I've been breaking the things, um, so I'm working on that. But lesson on how to use the drill and I've been doing much better so anyway we've just been in summary we've been spending a lot of our time like laying on the driveway under the trailer unscrewing the thing kids are like back and forth riding their bikes down the sidewalk sun is shining we got music on and that's just kind of what we've been doing with our days lately I'm thankful that um, as we get close to summer we have more light and so we can easily put in a couple hours like after a work day you know Tom has a job. We have normal lives. It's not like we are doing this with every second of our day. We're trying to fit it in where where we can. Um, so anyway, we've been spending our evenings doing this. But I think we're pretty close to the time we're supposed to stop talking on this sh show. Is there anything okay, else? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know we were going to do some work, but we'll just do the work and show you what we did last time. And um, Apparently we talk a lot because we say that on a lot of episodes, like, yeah, we're going to do work on the episode and show people what we're doing and then we talk and we're like wow look at that time's up i know but also i think sometimes that it's hard to like the work takes so much time so sometimes i think it can be weird to look at the screws are loud and then